taking place live from the field, a few of them with OSA Conservation, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to protecting the globally significant biodiversity of the OSA Peninsula, uh, of course, in Costa Rica. This remote corner harbors two and a half percent of the biodiversity of the entire planet in an area less than a thousandth of a percent of its total surface area. This is one of the most biologically diverse hotspots on the planet. And so joining us live right now, we have Maria Jose Mata Quiros joining us. She is the Restoration and Rewilding Program Coordinator at OSA Conservation. She dedicates her time to conserving and restoring tropical forests. So as a solutions-oriented uh, conservation scientist, uh, Maria Jose develops novel techniques to kickstart rainforest regeneration, and then shares these techniques with others uh, to facilitate their success in their restoration initiatives. So let's bring her in live with us right now. Maria Jose, how are you doing today? Hi, Joe. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's so good to see you. It's been a while. It's always great to see you in that nice green background. Yeah, you always see me like this, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, listen, I'm going to let you take over for a little bit. And then we'll let those tuning in with us uh, ask their questions. Perfect. Well, everyone who's watching, uh, as Joe said, I'm Maria Jose Mata. I'm a biologist from Costa Rica. I studied at the University of Costa Rica and I'm working with OSA Conservation. Uh, I've been working and living here for a couple of years now. I coordinate a restoration program and the botanical research more recently also. Um, Today I'm um, here at the Osa Arboretum, which is a trail network of more, of more than 20 kilometers. Uh, it goes through primary forest, secondary forest, mangroves. Um, so you can imagine the kind of tree diversity that we can find. And um, the objective of this Arboretum is to showcase, uh, to be a tool for engaging other people with this diversity from all around the world, but also and more specifically with the young people who live here in the Osa, in the Osa Peninsula. One of the very special parts of this algorithm is that we have taught a lot of the trees that we can find in the trails. So you can go to the tags and see QR codes and that leads you to a website, the osaarboretum.org website that you can also visit. And and this is very important because in the website, you can find more information about the species and you can find pictures of flowers and fruits and details of the leaves. And that's not easy, very easy to see right here. As you can see, the leaves are very high up. And so it's a very good tool if you want to learn, learn more. And we have also created this kind of interpretative sign so, so for that what the relationship it holds with ants and also the uses that humans have given to the species throughout history um i wanted to talk to you a little bit more a little bit about the tree propagation that we do here with the author boretum um, because that's one one of our biggest challenges and also what we one of the things we have gotten very good at <laughs> with with the years um, only last year we planted over 30,000 trees in the Osa Peninsula, and this year we're planning of planting twice as much. So on a typical Saturday morning, I will be walking on the Arboretum trails, collecting seeds. These are some of the seeds I found, and um, also a seedling, a guava seedling, like the big tree that you saw back there. We take this to our tree nursery. Where we have a germination room, a germination treatments if we have to. And, and once of acclimation period, and then they wait for the next planting season, which here starts around May, right before the rains begin. Um, when the seeds are ready, the, well, I mean the seedlings, we take them to plastic bags filled with soil and river sand, and they look like this. I brought a 
three of those seedlings so you can take a look at them. This is a copodiondo tree. You can see the little, beautiful, colorful leaves. And I brought one of the most rare trees, honestly, that you are going to see <laughs> in your life. This is a Pleodendron costarricense. Um, uh, just a couple of years ago, there were only a few adult trees of this known in the world. And they were here in the Osa Peninsula or the South Pacific of Costa Rica. And through botanical expeditions, we have found a few more. And we have collected seeds and produced some seedlings. And now there's hundreds of trees planted around the Peninsula. So it's a great example of what, what you can do, collecting seeds, doing propagation, sharing that information, and very interestingly, doing botanical expeditions. Can you imagine camping for a week in a place that looks like this? That's one of our more most um, exciting part of our jobs. And, and definitely a lot of I think uh, that a lot of people have questions about the objective that we have with this project. And, and everything we do really in the restoration and the botanical program is to reproduce this kind of tree, produce information, share that with the other local nurseries and with everyone really, and take very good, good care of them and have them become the giants that they're meant to become and jo join the Osa Peninsula forests. So this little guy can turn into this. I know if, if you have any questions, Joe, from the little... All right. the, oh, I lost you. Hey, can you Sorry, I lost connection Maria? there. Can you hear me, Maria? Jose? I can hear you now. Okay, yeah, perfect. I can hear you now. Excellent. Good. Well, look, you, you showed us that. Are you able the, to hear? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got gotcha. you. We saw you showed us that good, good. seedling and then you showed us that huge yeah. tree in the background. What is the space mm -hmm. of time between the seedling to that massive forest giant? How much time does that take? Hundreds of years. Yeah. Hundreds. Yeah, they go very slowly. They, they go a little fa grow a little faster in the first, first few years, but they get to a point where they grow super slowly. So this big tree right here is hundreds of years old. Amazing. Amazing. Those must be incredible yeah. walks in the morning, walking through the forest and picking the seeds, uh, collecting saplings for the tree yeah. farm. That is, that is a massive undertaking. 60,000 trees. That's quite a goal for this year. Yeah. Yeah, we have, a, of course, a big team of very cool people working on this. Yeah. All right. Well, we have a great crew tuning in right now. Many of them have said hi in the chat. Uh, many of them are saying things like you're doing amazing and important work. That's from Kathy, who's joining us in Texas right now. So do keep a few questions coming into that chat uh, from Maria Jose. Maria, let's Let's start right at the beginning. What brought you into conservation? Oof, well, you know, even just growing up in Costa Rica and being in close contact to nature, I think that helps. Um, but also I always lived in, well, I lived for a few years in a very rural area. So I grew up in the beach, in the forest very often. And I just was very like nature inclined and then I started studying biology and I love the academia and the research and everything, but being in the forest is what really makes me happy. And so I found that here and doing conservation work and specifically working in also conservation. All right. Well, you've been doing this for, for a while now and you know it's obviously something you're passionate about. It's always great to be able to find something you're passionate about. Uh, and make it into your career. But I'm wondering, 
uh, early on and maybe still now, are there any challenges you face as a woman in conservation? Of course, there, everyone knows that being a woman in science has its challenges. Recently, I became a mom also, so that brings a whole new set of challenges uh, from keeping the breastfeeding to dividing my time between science and motherhood and house chores and everything, even though you try to share everything, uh, the loads of work and just being a, being a woman, um, you have a lot, of, a lot more in your head <laughs> to begin with. Um, but it, also, I like to focus, focus on opportunities and being a mom and being a woman in science gives you a lot of, of that, of a different mindset and a lot of more creativity. And it has made me more efficient on my work because I have less time also. <laughs> All right. And so we have uh, uh, some questions coming in via the chat. Here's one from Sylvia. She is in Brazil. And so she's wondering the seedlings, are they planted in a protected area or are they also planted on private property? That's a great question. Um, both. We do a little bit of planted in our properties and properties of the government and, and yeah, in general protected areas. But we also do a lot of planting in private properties and cattle farms, in palm oil farms and trying to be, get them to be more, more sustainable. Uh, also a lot of farm owners that want to turn their farms into forests, all sorts of uh, scenarios we run into. All right. And so there's a follow-up question here. Um, do you map the position of where the plants are, are have been planted? How do you kind of keep track of where uh, you've placed different plants? Is there a system? Yes, we take G GPS points of most of the things that we plant, especially the rare and threatened trees, because we give more time and energy to those. Because we have very ambitious uh, reforestation goals. We collect seeds and propagate everything from fast growing trees to slow, slower growers. Um, so if we go to plant 5,000 trees, maybe we don't have a GPS point for every single one of them, but we do keep track of the general area. And that we planted for sure. All right, amazing. So uh, we love taking virtual field trips with classrooms uh, with OSA Conservation. And so we, we've definitely hosted you and your colleagues on several occasions. And sometimes mm -hmm. we kind of check out those, uh, exp the experimental forest where you're trying different combinations of planting uh, to see what um, what's the best way to regenerate an area. So what are you finding is the best way to take something like a pasture somewhere where cattle is maybe grazed what so far is looking like the best way to kind of rewild uh, an area of the rainforest perfect yeah we should visit the restoration plots soon again <laughs> with groups and um, well what we're seeing is that it does have an impact impact to plant pioneer species before you plant a slow grower slow growing species and um, because they do provide the shade and help improve the soils before these other species come and they have more specific needs so to say and um, so we can plant them at the same time or maybe the pioneers a little before and um, but the idea or what we are learning is that it does have an impact to recreate the conditions that will happen naturally you know, with the natural re regeneration process and help and speed up that instead of planting whatever you want. So just taking that into consideration helps. All right. And we have definitely seen, uh, you showed us plots in the past where it's just kind of one or two species. And wow, the difference you see with that kind of mixture and how quickly uh, some of the fast ones grow, the leaf litter kind of piling up and enriching the soil. Uh, things like bat boxes and other things to encourage, uh, you know, pollinators and seed dispersers. It's incredible work uh, that you and the whole team are doing to rewild. Uh, and then so important to share that with other projects. In fact, Sylvia is just saying now in the comments that she 
runs a small project on the south coast of Brazil uh, in the Atlantic forest. And they're focused on uh, endangered trees uh, and bringing in, in those back as well. So I'll share your social media contacts uh, towards the end of the event and maybe Sylvia can reach out uh, with her project. So Kathy is joining us. Kathy's in the US and Texas. And she's wondering how can yeah, we should help? talk to you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Kathy, sorry, I think we have a small delay. What were we saying, Maria Jose? No, I was uh, just checking if I understood, cor understood correctly. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'll share your, your contacts and maybe Sylvia can reach out uh, to share her project. Okay, uh, Kathy's joining us in the US, she's in Texas, and she's wondering what can people do to help out the restoration efforts? Maybe you're you know, somewhere far away, what can, what can people do to help uh, what you're doing? You can do many things to help for sure you can share help us share our work from social media uh, you can come visit you can volunteer with us um, we do the work we do with the help of a lot of people so economical help helps donations you can visit our page osaconservation.org and there you find the donation button um, and yeah, there's many ways of getting involved. You just, you just have to reach out for sure. Yeah, absolutely. While you were sharing, I, I, I posted the link up on the screen uh, and then I posted the links to the Twitter and Instagram um, accounts for Oso Conservation. So I do hope people check it out, follow along, look for ways to support. Perfect. What about if you want to visit the Osa Peninsula? Can you volunteer uh, on some of the projects, maybe on the tree farm or something like that? Yeah, you can come and you can volunteer in all the projects from sea turtles to wildlife monitoring, reforestation, botanical, in the farm. Uh, you can help with all of the teams right here uh, and you can get to know this place, the Osaboretum and the whole area. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the work you do, you, you showed kind of that sometimes you're out camping for an entire week and then you showed what the forest looks like. Is that the most challenging part of your job, kind of being out for a week and camping in conditions like that? Or is there something else that's more challenging? Mm, I think sometimes trying to find um, areas to convert back into forest can be more challenging. Um, because when you go to expeditions, you have a group of like-minded people going into an adventure. And so it's difficult, of course, and it has a lot of logistical details, uh, but it's also fun and exciting. Um, but when you have to work with mindsets that are not the same and, and you have to convince people to conserve and to restore, uh, that for me, at least, is more difficult. Yeah. So is that a big part of the work then? Is it, do, do people come to you sometimes and say, Hey, can, can you help rewild our land? Or do you find most of the time you're approaching people in the community and offering to do it? I would say half and half people in the Osa Peninsula already has a lot of conservation mindset. So I get calls like, Hey, come visit my farm. We want to plant some trees. And we work together, um, and that usually happens. Uh, but then also, since we're trying to focus on biological corridors, um, we sometimes have to knock on doors and try to get more lands, more farms um, on the project. Because we have big, amb big ambitions, right? Planting 120,000 trees, and yeah. it's a lot of work. Yeah, But we have no a great question. team working on that. That you do. You do have an incredible team. Uh, we'll be joined by a few of your team members uh, in about an hour and a half from now. So we're really excited uh, to see another aspect of the important work uh, that's happening that OSA Conservation is doing. I wonder if maybe to wrap up today, Maria Jose, 
you are you get to work in one of the most biologically diverse places on the planet. I know that you can only scratch the surface of the biodiversity for us right now, but can you tell us about some of the life that you get to see when you're out and you're working some of the wildlife? Sure. I just just coming to work this morning, I ran into a little group of peccaries crossing the road. Um, and that's actually one of the things that got me engaged with the Osa Peninsula. I first came to visit here a few years ago. And in the first day I was here, I got to see the four species of monkeys that we have in Costa Rica. And I was in wow. love with this place. And so, yeah, while we go out and collect seeds, of course, we look, we see a lot of amazing trees and all kinds of plants and orchids and other epiphytes. Uh, but we run into snakes, uh, monkeys, peccaries, uh, tyras, um, yeah, so many things that you can see. Well, it sounds amazing. You're so lucky to get to work in such a beautiful place. The work that you're doing through OSA Conservation is so important and it's helping so many other organizations uh, to kind of follow in your footsteps uh, for rewilding wild areas. I wanna share here a banner uh, with your links on Twitter and Instagram if you wanna follow along with Maria Jose, the work that she's doing. Uh, there's two spots that you can do it right there and I'll pop up the link one more time for OSA Conservation. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about the work, support the work uh, that OSA Conservation is doing. Maria Jose, thank you so much for joining us live from the rainforest today. We can't wait to connect one more time uh, with OSA Conservation as well. Keep up the great work and hopefully next time I see you, I have a bunch of students hanging out with us as well. Yes, 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 amazing. Thank you, Joe, and thanks everyone who's watching. And yeah, don't hesitate uh, to reach out. All right. Amazing. Maria Jose, thank you to you. Thank you for the team that's helping you out today. Uh, and yeah, we're looking forward to one more trip to the OSA before the festival ends. We'll see you later. Thank you. Yeah, bye.